So welcome you all. Um, all right, so let's just begin, I think. Uh, I'm not going to even ask you who likes to dance and who loves to dance, because I think that, well, we all do. Um, it doesn't work, you know? We all do love to dance. There's something very primordial about like dancing, where it's super fun. And it's something that if we do it right, and I mean, if we don't overthink it, um, it's just an expression of joy, right? Right? And it's very fun to look at someone else that dances because they're having fun, so you're having fun, and it's like this is basically how it is in life. The thing is that for animations, um, it is motion, all right, and it's fun to watch, like to look at, but very often when we try to do it, especially in Android, it becomes like so, so, so tiring and so exhausting, and it like kind of takes the fun away from it. I think my video is not going to work. So it kind of takes the fun away from it when it, you're doing something and working so, so, so hard for it. So. Nice to meet you all. I'm Britt. Um, I work for Nexmo, uh, a de developer relations team. I'm doing uh, Android there mainly. Uh, we have all kinds of communication services. So I'll show some, some examples of the apps that uh, I'm using and I'm writing. So um, I'm also a Google developer expert for Android and came all the way from Israel, where I'm also leading communities such as Women Tech Workers. So if you ever come to Israel, I'm there. And let me know, because there are tons of fun things happening. Um, before I even begin, I would like to kind of see where we're talking to today. So who knows anything about constraint layout? Who have heard about it? By show of hands, please. Awesome. So everyone, that's great. And who's been using it a little bit? Great. In production? OK, like half in production. That's great. Uh, but at least we know what we're talking about today. And um, today, I'm going to speak a little bit about motion, not a little bit, like the entire time, about motion layout. And who have heard about motion layout? OK, like 40%, let's say. And uh, of you guys who have had the time to play around with it a little bit, Ah, only a few, that's great. Because what I'm going to do today um, mainly is basically to, uh, to, show, to, to show you really how you can use Motion Lab and for what you can use it. Um, and, you know, to dance and to have fun with it because it's really, really, really fun. Motion Layout extends. Constraint layout. So basically, it's a layout, and everything you know about constraint layout applies here because it just adds up more capabilities, uh, motion capabilities. And that's what we're going to see today. Basically, it is for motions that the user drives. So it handles interactions, user interactions. So we're going to see some clicks and swipes and stuff like that, and how you can animate or make the layout move according to that, according to the user interactions. Um, the cool thing about it is it does so much magic for us and so much you know, calculations and stuff like that behind the hood. And then for each frame, you can actually uh, get a frame with the motion according to the user's interaction. So according to the user swipe or click or everything, every frame uh, is controlled. And we're going to see in a second. Uh, uh, examples for that. Um, all right. And as I said, my goal today is to sh show you how you can dance with it, so to have fun, and how it is here uh, for you to do like very easily and simply and like flowingly uh, to create animations, motions in your app. And also, my emphasis here is that it's really here for your current app. And why is this important? Because I feel like so many times, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like so many times when we hear about new things, new components, new libraries, um, animations, new layouts, stuff like that, it's always in the context of um, if you were to do a new app, consider that. Or if you were to do like a brand new um, standalone pretty much feature, consider that. Or 
if you're gonna do like a major refactoring, which we all really like, consider that, right? Am I like right a little bit? Okay, so this is how I felt. So it was really important for me to make sure that uh, everything I show you today is stuff that I actually try and integrate pretty s easily on um, our app. And the app that I'm using is a quite a complex app. Um, this is just like the main screen. So we have tons of screens and tons of navigation stuff, and the layout is very complex. So everything I show today and I talk about today, please believe me that I did integrate it pretty simply into our complex app. Um, so that was to start with, and it's very important for me uh, to say. Um, I am going to say one more thing that it is still on alpha, alpha 2, so it's pretty, pretty, pretty new, and there are many stuff that have not been implemented yet, um, and we can accomplish, but I decided to show like how to start using it more simply, and because you guys um, uh, have not used it yet, I want to show how to get started. And after that, uh, like after the presentation, I can share some blog posts and some code snippets that I already shared some code and how to do like more advanced stuff. But let's like start with the basic because I really want you to be excited by the new motion layout. That's my goal for today. Um, all right, so with that, let's just start. Um, let's start with an example, one cool and nice example. So as I told you, I do all kind of communication services. Uh, and this is like one screen that I really like that is for as you can see, a phone call. Um, and what I wanted to accomplish here is basically to have this button of the keypad, like the animation, ah, oh, the animations work for me. Um, all right, so this is basically should happen with a swipe, and the users just swipe the keypad up. Um, and as you can see, every frame is calculated and animated. So for every frame, Motion Loud knows what to do for us and how the screen should look like. Um, all right. So let's see how we can implement this thing. I'll really walk you through it in order to see how simple and cool it is. So the first thing we need to do is to create a layout. And the layout is actually the, like the regular layout that you're going to do anyway. And it's here to basically define the players or define the, uh, the views that are going to be on the screen with all their attributes and like everything that you would normally do. If you already use constraint layout, as I said, motion layout extends it. So you can just switch the tag uh, for constraint layout into motion layout. If not, I'll talk a little bit later on how to um, like quite easily do like refactoring or like how to change your app. But basically, the thing is that uh, you need to have your layout wrapped with motion layout. Because motion layout would in animate uh, the uh, the views that are its direct children, and we'll talk about it a little bit a little bit more in a second. So after I have this layout with all the views um, and all their attributes, the next thing I need to do is to define the scenes. What do I mean by the scenes? It's basically to say, okay, I want to move from this place to that place, from this type of layout, kind of layout, to that kind of layout. So where do I want to start and when do I want to begin? My start and end states are this, where when the keypad is up and the keypad is down. Basically, what's going to happen? So I can just define this kind of layout and this kind of views. Basically, behind the scenes, um, not everything is animated here, right? Like not everything actually changes because the button for the mute and like the hold and all of this, they do not change, right? They do not move anywhere, so I don't really need to animate them. Um, so on these scenes, you can define everything because it's, it's simpler, but basically what's going to happen, and you can skip the ones, the views that do not move if it's easier for you, because under the hood, that's what it's going to do for you, to just extract, extract the ones, the views that are going to move. So. Basically, what you want to do is to define these scenes. The easiest way, there are a few ways to do it. The easiest way to do it is basically to write a layout, as if you would normally do, just to create a layout for the start scene and to create a layout for the last scene, for the end scene. That's it, as if you would normally do. So basically, what I'm telling you is go ahead and create three um, 
layout or three um, uh, layout files, XML files, right, for the layout, like the general one, the red one, and then two separate one for the start and the end. And then I told you, you can do it like the green ones for the start and the end, for keep it up and keep it down. Um, there can be like complete layouts, but actually what's going to happen there is that the constraints are going to be extracted. So only the, the views that are going to be animated under the hood, they're going to calculate where do they need to go from where and to where. And these are like the constraints. So um, things like the sizes of the views and the, the location, the position of the views on the screen, this is the constraint set that are going to be extracted. So that's going to happen for you. The important thing about that to know is that the views that we can reference on the scenes, so on the green uh, views, are the idea, are IDs of the views that we defined on the top on the uh, red layout, on the general layout. So it's the same views, the same, the IDs are defined only there. And what's going to happen is that all the constraints, the sizes and the positions are going to be rewritten for you. So for a view with a specific ID, um, the ID you define on the, uh, on the red layout and then on each green layout, it's going to rewrite the position, it's going to rewrite the size for each, uh, for each scene. All right, so that's great. And we have now three layout um, XML files. But how to tie them up? How can they talk to one another? So basically, we have another fellow, so another uh, XML file, which is not the layout file, it's just an XML file, which is called a motion scene. We'll see it in a second. It's pretty easy, and its job in the world is to say, um, this is the start, and this is the end, and you are attached together. So we attach the, the two scenes. How does it look like? Basically, all you need to do is to create an XML file wrapped in a motion scene tag. And in the motion scene, the first thing you want to do is to define the transitions. So as I said, just to say, go from this layout to the other layout. And that's it. And now what we need to do is to tell the layout, the red layout, the original one, to tell this layout, this is the animation that you're going to make. So this is uh, the motion scene. This is the, the, this is the motion. This is where the magic is going to happen. Go there. And the way to do it is basically just to add this line that uh, on the layout, on your regular layout that we wrapped with motion layout tag, just to say layout description, go to this motion scene. So it's pretty simple. And this is basically the way that all of, this view are, all of these views, all of these XML files are being tied together. So the layout talks to a motion scene. The motion scene just attach the first, the start scene, and the end scene. And that's it. And now what we wanted to do is to define the trigger. So this motion, this animation, what triggers it? How does it happen? Or when does it happen? Currently, there are two ways or two triggers that we can use. One is an on click, which basically say, if this button that I defined on the red layout, right, on just my original layout. So if the layout with the, if the view with this ID, the button that triggers, that drags the keypad, if it was clicked, just toggle between the views, toggle between the scenes, I mean, toggle between the scene start and the scene end, between the uh, keypad down and the keypad up. This is what it does. But another cool thing, I want to do the swipe, right? I, want, I wanted the user to control uh, the, the going up and down. So there is another tag that I can use. Instead of the click, I would use an on swipe. And this is too really, really simple and nice. All I do here is say, OK, when this button, the drag keypad button, uh, is being touched, where is it being touched? On the top side, right? Because we want to drag up. Then drag, drag up. So when we drag up, the scenes are going to change. And it's going to do all the calculation for us. So we, it controls the velocity and everything. Like each frame is going to be animated for us at each state. Uh, all we had to do is add this thing.
So it's pretty good. It's pretty great. And basically, it's pretty magical, I think. Like, we barely did anything. We didn't say anything about the specific animation. And it just did everything for us. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the way it's going to. Uh, it's going to be seen is like that, like we saw before. Um, and as I said, there are tons of things that just happened out of the box for us, right? Tons of things that were animated for us. Um, which kind of animations do you see here? So which attributes were just um, were just animated for us? Like what? Sorry. Right, so the alpha or visibility is being just calculated and animated for us. Alpha or visibility, what else? Basically, we move it up. So like translations or positions and stuff like that are being animated for us. Uh, what else? What do you see on the, like the hang up button? It rotates, isn't it? Like, it's cool. So. <laughs> We get tons of stuff that are being done for us just out of the box. Um, all this stuff that I said before are just being done for us. We don't need to say anything else. Just define them, define different values in the start scene and the end scene, and it just does everything for us. So it's really, really cool. And the thing is, though, that what happens if I want to, def to animate some other attributes, like stuff that are not here, like colors, background, background colors, or um, I wanted to animate the, uh, the size of the text, for example. So let's, if you can see here, um, my name is like really large at the beginning. And then when I swap up, I want, to, uh, I want a smaller size. So that was not there from the out of the box attributes. So what can I do? Basically, I need to define a custom attribute. And the custom attributes are basically any attributes that the view holds, any view that you can use, that has a getter and a setter. This is what defines the attribute name. So everything, every attribute that has a getter and a setter can be uh, used here and animated for you. And it has to have the type of this thing, like color dimension, um, um, integer, float, string, or Boolean. All of this can be animated and can be used as a custom attribute. So that's quite tons of stuff. And let's see the example of how to do it, for example, for the text size. In order to do that, I'm not going to lie, we have to do a little bit of prep work. So everything we did so far is great, is awesome. But we need to prepare a little bit more. Let's see what do we need to do. So up until now, we had the general layout file, and then two separate, uh, we had the motion scene, right? That just ties together two separate scenes, the start and the end. What we just need to do now is instead of having two separate files for scene start and scene end, I needed to have them both in one motion scene. So I kind of need to have all the constraints, as I told you, what we actually care about are not the views from these layouts of the scenes. We care about the constraints. We care about the attributes that we do need to animate. So we need to have all these constraints in one file in the motion scene file. It's not that hard as it sounds like. So on the motion scene file, what we're going to do is basically um, switch between the layout just to an ID, because we're not talking to a layout anymore. We're talking to a specific ID that we're going to define. Where are we going to define it? Just below the transition tag, we're just going to add constraint sets with these IDs. This is where we define the constraint set. So we define a constraint set for the keep it up, for the keep it down, and for the keep it up. And everything we had on the layout has also need to, like, needs to be here. And the way to do it, the way to move them from a layout to an ID is actually pretty simple. So on the layout, we had views, right? Because the layout know how to talk to views. So we had views. And in each view, we had the attributes that we care about. And these attributes actually define the constraint that we were able to animate. What we would just need to do is on the ID under the motion layout, each view actually becomes a constraint 
Because as we said, we care about constraint. We don't care about like, the views themselves, just about the constraint and the size and the, uh, and the positions. So we're going to just create, instead of a view, an image view or whatever, create a constraint tag. So as I said, on the constraint set that we just added, we need to add all the constraint tags. So each view gets a constraint tag, which is pretty simple. Basically, what you can do between us is just copy paste everything that you had on the layout, just paste it in the, in the constraint. It's going to be pretty easy for you. Once again, the ID has to be the ID from the red layout, from the original layout, because this is like how do we, we find the layout? Uh, at the, how do we find the views? That's it. So it's pretty simple. Um, and that's it. Just copy paste all the all the uh, attributes and the ones that are actually constrained and that can be animated will be animated for you. Just remember that the constraints are being rewritten. So everything you do on like each attribute that you want to animate has to be defined both on, on the start constraint set and on the end constraint set. So that was pretty much it. And now, magic. But basically, yeah, it's, you're right. It's, it's like the same magic. Because if we did everything correctly, that um, the layout's supposed to be like, working the same. It's supposed to do like, just the same thing. And now, after all this prep work, which was a lot of copy pasting, but like, just copy pasting like two files, that's it. What we can do now? It's basically to add the custom attributes that we wanted, because this is what we wanted to do. How do we do that? So as I said on our, uh, on our example, we want to animate the text size of the name attribute. So what I'm going to go is to go to the constraint uh, tag with the name ID, and then to add a child tag for a custom attribute. The custom attribute would have a text size and then a dimension, a dimension because this is what we can do. And um, basically, that's it. So uh, most important thing to remember, as I said, is whatever you do on one constraint set, on the keep it down, you have to do the same thing on the keep it up um, in order to have them both animated for specific views. Basically, that's it. And now. Now we can have a different kind of magic. And basically, that's all we had to do in order, for it to, make, in order to make this work, in order to have the, uh, the text size animated with everything else. So it was pretty simple, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty simple and pretty nice and pretty cool. And it works for all the custom attributes with these types. Um, one thing that I don't see here, though, is images, right? Which is pretty bumming because we love Im images. Um, so luckily for us, in the constraint layout um, uh, library, they created for us an image filter view. And an image filter view extends image view, and it can do some cool filters for us and to animate the cool filters. So um, what we can do is basically just animate saturation, contrast, uh, warmth, and, and crossfade. Uh, we'll see some examples in a second. All of them are floats, so you can define anywhere, um, uh, anywhere on the scale for each, uh, for each of the um, uh, attributes. All right. Let's take an example, and I want to like to change the co contrast for the image view for the avatar. So what I'm going to do is to add a, con a custom attribute for the saturation. I'm going to start with a very, uh, very colorful one, and then to end up with um, uh, with 0 0.2. So it's like a um, not completely grayscale, but a little bit. And that's all I had to do in order to create this effect. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but basically we start with something that is very saturated, so very colorful, and then end up with something that is very close to grayscale. Um, that's it. That's pretty much it. And this was really, really easy. And that's pretty cool. Um, to recap a little bit what we did, what we had to do is just to create a motion layout, to create a, our layout, which is a motion layout, and then create a motion scene. And then in the motion scene, we just define, OK, this is the first. Uh, 
constraint set, and this is this, the end constraint set. We ha started with layouts, which was pretty simple. And honestly, I recommend you to start and go ahead with layouts anyway, and then moved into a motion scene in order to uh, in order to add up more attributes. And then we just tie up the layout and the motion scene and added some custom attributes and filters for images. So that was pretty cool. Now for the astute observers, do you see some problems, some stuff that is like not working that nicely, that smoothly here, not that awesome? The button, which? Huh, I liked it. I did it on purpose. What do you mean? You didn't like it? Oh, I added a rotation. I added just a rotation attribute, and it does that. It's one of the things that has been done out of the box. So I added a rotation, and it rotates between 0 and 360. That's it. Extremely simple. Uh, what don't we like here? I'll give you a, a hint, something with the image and my name. Do you see that it, ah, it doesn't do the animation. I lied. I don't know why it's not working. OK. Do you see it a little bit that when I like when I drag it up, it kind of crosses one another, and we kind of don't like it. Yeah. So there's a way to fix that. I'm going to show you um, a simpler example on how to do it because in this example, it's going to be a little bit harder. The thing is though that uh, some awesome tooling uh, uh, at this uh, very moment are being uh, developed for us in order to make all these fixes a little bit easier. Basically, what we would want to do is to change the path a little bit, right, in the middle of the path, to change the path a little bit in order for them to not let go linearly and not cross one another. Um, it, it can be done. We'll, show, we'll, we'll see a simple example on how to do it in a, a different thing, though. And once again, very uh, the Nicholas and John promised that we're going to have this tool um, somewhere in the nearest future. So we're hoping for that. Um, all right. So let's check out a little bit of a simpler example, but also very cool and very useful. And as I promised before, everything I do here is basically stuff that I simply integrated into our app. I do want to show you a little bit of a cleaner look now, because what I want to show you is the button, uh, the, the bottom uh, navigation bar. So I want to show this thing. Um, let's see how can I do something a little bit more cool and colorful with that. Um, OK, so do you see I just wanted to swipe the view pager? You don't see the color so well, but basically I wanted it to switch colors between red, and then in the middle we have yellow, and then at the end we have like green. So I wanted to accomplish something like that. How can we do it? Basically, we can start with two states, right? Which we already know how to do. I mean, I talked about it for like 10, 15 minutes now, so we already know how to do it, right? 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 Yay! Wow, you're so loud. I'm so happy. So um, basically, we can start with two states. We already know how to do it. We have a start state. We have an end state. And we already saw how simple it is to do. Create a motion layout, create a motion scene, and then two separate constraint sets for start and the end. Uh, very simple. And then out of the box, as I promised you before, we'll get the icon scale, right? Because if we define uh, the sizes, it's part of the things we get out of the box as constraints. So the icons would be um, animated, the scale would be animated for us. The interactive position uh, would be animated for us, so no problems there. We already know how to add custom attributes, for example, for the background color, right? Right? Yes, OK, awesome. Um, I will show you a little bit, because we saw a different example. So we just had a custom attribute for background color, and now it's in the type of a color, not a dimension. So it's, it's pretty simple, though. And next thing we can do is um, to change the icon color. What I did here, because you cannot tint yet, we cannot use a custom attribute of type uh, uh, of drawable, or um, you cannot uh, of a color list, so you cannot tint them. So what I just did is I used the crossfade attribute, 
basically how you do it, once again, it's like extremely simple. You just add a sor source for the image as if we do normally, but then we have another one, another attribute outsource. So we basically uh, say, okay, start with this image, end up with this image, and then we can add a cross crossfade attribute between one and zero from which, where, where do you want to be at the beginning and at the end? Um, that's it. Extremely simple. Um, and now it's going to happen. So it's half magic. Why it's half magic? Uh, or two third, actually, because what we did so far, and we already know how to do it, you all promised me, uh, we already know how to, like, to go between two states. But I have one more state, right? I have three tabs. So how do I do that? Like, how do I get to this in between, in the to the middle state? What I want in the middle state basically is to create this type of layout. If I could have create this type of layout where the middle icon is larger and the color. I don't know if you can see the colors. The color is is yellow. Um, how do I do that? For that, we can use something. That is called keyframes. And keyframes are really, really, really cool. Keyframes basically say, all right, this is the start, this is the end, but I want to go something somewhere specific in between. I want you to make sure that in between this motion, you stop at a specific place, at a specific position with a specific layout, with specific attrib attributes for specific views. So how do we do that? I'm going back to the scene, to the motion scene file. And inside the transition, we add a keyframe set. So it's all the keyframes are going to be there just one after the other. And each of them is going to have a specific uh, tag. Each keyframe, so each tag, is pair view, pair specific frame. So a frame goes between 0 and 100. And we can define anywhere in between. Um, where do we want to? Where do we want to be? Which attributes do we want to have? So, for example, first thing I want to do is to have the icon scale animated. So, at the middle of the uh, of the path. So, uh, at at frame uh, 50, right between 0 and 100, we want to have the icon uh, the icon scaling. How do I do it? I ha I add a key attribute in the keyframe set. I add a key attribute at frame 50, so it's exactly in the middle. Go to the target view with this, um, with this uh, ID that we defined on the layout file. And then scale the X and the Y um, uh, twice, so make it bigger. Um, basically, that's it. So that's what, how we do it for, uh, for the sizing. Another thing we wanted to do, we wanted to animate the indicator color, right? Because we want it to be yellow. How do we do that? We add another key attribute. Once again, at frame position 50, because we need it exactly in the middle. Once again, take the indicator. And then we add a custom attribute, please, on the like we did with the with the constraint, the same thing. So we just add a custom attribute, background color. Please change the background color to what we wanted to yellow. This is pretty much it. And now it doesn't animate. Yeah, it animates. Um, yeah. So this is pretty much it, and it does all this magic for us. I didn't show the spaces like in between, but basically what I do there is like I enlarge. The, the indicator, we already know how to do it. The color changes for us. So once again, I don't know if you see it, but it actually animates uh, and fades the colors in between, which is really, really, really cool, I think. And now next thing I just want to show you, because up until now, we just did stuff with XMLs and just did stuff with the layouts, and that's it. But another thing we wanted to do here is basically to hook this layout up with the view pager, because I don't want to only be able to like animate the, the view, right, the indicator. I don't want to do only that. I want to actually like swipe the view pager, right, and then to just stop at the specific places at the view or at the motion, at this animation thing. 
How do I do it? It's extremely simple, but it's example that can be used. They did it also for um, um, for the navigation drawer, for uh, recycler view. So you can do it with everything, and it's pretty. It works pretty much the same. On your fragment or activity, wherever you have the view pager uh, defined. Basically, you create a listener, right? In this case, it's for the page change. And then every time the page scrolls, what I can do is to go to the motion layout, because it's just a layout, it's just a view. So it has the attribute, and we can just you know, address them from within the code, like any other view. So I defined, please, motion layout. Set your progress into the right place. And the right place, like the math here, it, it's pretty easy. It just means um, like uh, the, uh, the percentage of, the, of the, the, uh, the motion, right? So we have three views, uh, three pages. So just uh, go to the specific place, go to the percentage of the path that we wanted to animate. Extremely simple. And then we just need to add the listener. Um, to the page change, to the view pager, and that's it. Pretty simple, and everything it does for us is just magical, I think. Uh, PR magic, because we didn't do barely anything, and it does all the animations for us. So really, really, really cool. Um, basically, that's it. Um, once again. I want to say that the goal here is to show you like how can we do like this cool stuff on your current app. And once again, I promise you that everything I just showed you, I did it on, my, on our very complex app. So our, in order for you to be able to actually go home and like play around with it on your apps and not like on like play projects, maybe some a little bit like small notes. Um, like what? So first of all, we talked before that you have to have a layout that is a motion layout. And as I said, if you have a constraint layout, you don't have any problem there because you just change the tag since motion layout extends constraint layout. So you can just change the tag, the tag and you're all good. The thing is that if you don't, what you want to do is basically to wrap your existing layout with, uh, with motion layout. And what I did, so motion layout, as I said a little bit before, currently it can only animate the views that are its direct children. So what you want to do is just wrap your layout and then decide which views do you want to do you want to have motion with, which is usually it's not all the views that you have on the layout. And then just one by one, when it makes sense, just take them up and uh, define the constraints for them. Um, honestly, like my uh, my layouts were pretty complex. And it became like pretty easy when I knew which ones do I want to uh, do I want to animate and do I want to have the motion for. Next thing we did is to define the start and the end scenes. So we saw that you can do it in layouts and you can do it inside the constraint set. A really good tip is to always, no matter what, um, do it on layouts because then you can actually use the editor. You can use the layout editor and see how it looks like. So you can modify all the attributes and everything. Um, it, it, it's going to be very nice and simple for you. And only then just copy paste it back into the to the motion scene. So that's like my tip for you, uh, which made stuff really easy for me. And then um, just a little bit. Sorry, just a little bit of um, uh, of what we have on the motion scene. So on the motion scene, we talked about the transition. And then we had two constraint sets, right, for the start and the end. And then what you want to do is to create the triggers. Then in the constraint sets, we talked a little bit about custom attributes. So only when you need to use custom attributes, only then you can actually just do the transition between a layout into IDs inside a motion scene. Then we talked a little bit about keyframes. And I'm going to post some, uh, some blog posts and some uh, examples that I did with like, more uh, advanced stuff about keyframes. And basically, that's it. And then your app can basically do magic stuff. 
Um, so pretty much that's all I have for you today. I really want to say big thank you for John and Nicholas that first developed this uh, amazing tools for us, but second, um, have been very helpful with uh, the presentation and like the demos and everything like that. So big thank you for them, even though they're not here. Um, in order to learn some more stuff, Nicholas had a series of blog posts that goes like really deep into the um, into the capabilities that we, you have. So if you want to go deep dives, this is like good places to go. It currently has like four parts, uh, which is uh, pretty good. And uh, then also. Uh, as I promised, I'll very soon share everything uh, that I can, all the blog posts and stuff like that. So I'll do it pretty, pretty soon. Um, uh, so I really promise on that. And uh, currently, if you want to see some more examples, so uh, Mark Ellison, also a friend on the, uh, has the styling Android, has uh, two parts on how to create a collapsing toolbar, which I didn't show you today because there are these examples, so I wanted to, to uh, show something a little different. And also, Chris Benz has uh, a small uh, app that showcases some, uh, it's just a demo app that showcases some very cool animations with constraint uh, layout and motion layout. With that, thank you all so much for being here. Um, please keep in touch. I'm still here around. So if you have questions, I don't know if we have time, but if you have questions, um, I'm still here all day. So that's it. Thank you all so much.